so today we're going to be talking about the power of stitching services together based on our experience with Cloud Composer. Although uh, hopefully it's going to be useful also for those of you who haven't yet had a chance to try Cloud Composer. As Leah said, there will be two uh, presenters in this specific session. Let me start with myself. Uh, so my name is Philip Knapik. I'm the product manager for Cloud Composer, working with Airflow on Airflow for the last roughly two years. Obviously, I have some longer experience in the IT management, uh, which kind of proves my age. And I have graduated from uh, computer um, networks and services uh, faculty at the University of Science and Technology in Krakow in Poland. With that, let me pass over to my co-presenter, Rafał. Okay, so as Philip introduced a little bit my, my, myself, uh, I'm uh, Rafał Biegacz, I'm, I'm working within Google, and within Google I'm engineering manager responsible for Cloud Composer, and together with uh, Philip we, we have been working uh, on Airflow and with Airflow for the last uh, uh, two years. Personally, I think that Airflow is uh, really like fantastic technology, and with them going that the importance of Airflow probably is going to, to grow. Uh, as we know, uh, and we observe in the industry like uh, operationalization of data and managing data uh, uh, is coming into the demand. So with them going, I think that Airflow is going to, to play even a bigger role in uh, in managing or, uh, managing our data, orchestrating the, uh, the jobs, uh, changing um, our data. Uh, okay, so without further ado, let's let's move to the um, uh, to, to, to our presentation. So, the, the title of our uh, presentation is about teaching uh, uh, services uh, uh, together. And actually, uh, you can think about this teaching actually from two angles. So uh, in, in the first part of the presentation, I'm going to talk about stitching other Google Cloud uh, uh, Platform services. So, so we uh, can deliver managed workflow environments to, to users. And in the second part of the, of the presentation, Philip is, uh, to, di is to, to, to dive into Stitching and integration capabilities of Airflow, which is like a magic power of uh, of Airflow. So, what what Cloud Composer is, and uh, let 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 us a little bit introduce the Cloud Composer to to uh, to you. So, it will be like a base for further uh, um, for for the remaining part of the uh, of this presentation. And uh, what we'll be delivering to you is the information. Uh, and patterns that uh, the Cloud Composer users uh, um, reveal when they are using Airflow on Google Cloud Platform and especially within the Cloud Composer. So Cloud Composer is actually uh, many GCP services stitched together uh, so we can provide to you managed Airflow environments. And this managed Airflow environments uh, give you a big, big uh, advantage or benefit. You actually can focus, uh, after creating Cloud Composer environments, you can focus on actually developing DAGs and executing them. Uh, while the other things related to maintaining Airflow environments uh, you know, uh, lies on the shoulders of, uh, of, the, of Google. Um, of course, Apache Airflow is at the heart of uh, Cloud Composer. Um, we we try to to run a 100% open source compatible Airflow version. We do small tweaks to to Apache Airflow, uh, just so it is runnable on a Google Cloud platform. But other than that, it's almost like a vanilla version of Apache uh, Airflow. And uh, we organize uh, instrumentation and deployment of Apache Airflow in this way, so it's very easy to deploy, like literally within one or two clicks of your uh, mouse, you can get a fully operational uh, uh, Airflow environment. Uh, and it's going to run on managed infrastructure, uh, the infrastructure that is uh, governed and uh, managed by, by Google, so you really, you don't need to be bothered with upgrading uh, operating systems of the virtual machines or, or doing other operational or end maintenance uh, stuff. And we deliver also a possibility to install PyPy packages. Uh, so, so it's very easy for, for you to modify the um, default version of Airflow that comes to, to you from uh, Cloud Composer. And of course, if you need help, you can reach out to, uh, uh, to technical support that is going to, to help you either with the managing of, of, of your Cloud Composer environment or uh, trouble, or do some troubleshooting with your DAGs. So what actually Cloud, cloud Environment uh, is, it is actually a conglomerate of different uh, uh, GCP services put together uh, in the seamless uh, uh, way. As you can see, 
on the left hand side of the of the slide there is quite a number of services that we kind of uh, connect and glue to, to each other uh, to deliver to you fully managed uh, airflow uh, environment so when it comes to the compute infrastructure everything everything uh, um, uh, like airflow scheduler workers uh, the web server, um, th these things uh, are running uh, on uh, Kubernetes. Uh, web server runs uh, within Google App Engine. Um, when it comes to Airflow metadata uh, database, we are using uh, Cloud SQL with automated uh, uh, backups. Your DAX, uh, uh, logs of tasks are, are stored in uh, cloud storage. Uh, you can also find there and uh, plugins that uh, you can upload new plugins if you like. If you would like to share some data between your DAX, you can also put uh, that into GCS uh, bucket. But this compute and uh, and storage infrastructure is not everything uh, that, that we deliver. We actually deliver much more. Um, and you, you can see it like in the, in the Third line on the front, on the left hand side of the of the of the slide, and and uh, below there is quite a lot of services that actually bring you bring you like much richer experience. And let me dive into into it a little bit. So it's not only about delivering um, Airflow instances; it is about uh, delivering something that that that, that is secure. So. Uh, by definition, cloud composite environments are integrated with Cloud IAM. As a result, only authenticated and authorized users can uh, log into the cloud composer environments. Uh, if you, we all know that data is uh, super critical. Depending on uh, on the business that you are working on, there are uh, smaller or bigger restrictions how you handle the data, how you process it, when when you delete it. So really, if you want to have, uh, if you want to minimize the risk of data exfiltration, you can you can even uh, use the feature that we call um, security perimeter, where you basically uh, put the whole airflow instance into a perimeter that protects uh, or prevents any uh, data uh, leakages. Encryption is by default at rest in, in, in transit. And you can you can you can choose whether you want to Google to manage the encryption keys for you or you want to uh, manage those keys on your own. Uh, we kind of mentioned infrastructure like database layer, storage layer, uh, and uh, compute layer. This infrastructure is managed for you by by Google, so you don't you don't need to be bothered with um, uh, updating of operating systems, applying patches or uh, or fixes for um, security vulnerabilities. Uh, when it comes to bigger installations of Airflow in, 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 in inter enterprises and uh, companies, you would like to probably have like common set of rules uh, that apply to all Airflow instances. So, uh, so thanks to that, you, you can gain some kind of unification when it comes to governance, not only on the product level, uh, um, in GCP, but on the on the whole organizational level, and uh, we have proper organizational uh, level policies that you can use to to, to manage uh, and control uh, Airflow instances. For example, let me mention one of the policies that, that that we support. This policy is called domain restricted sharing. It means that only users from a company domain uh, will be able to log into the uh, system and uh, and have access to Airflow instance. Um, so no more like no more people uh, who who use the private uh, uh, Google uh, Cloud Platform accounts to, to log into the, the Airflow instances. So this is this is the uh, like set of features related to, to, to security, but it's not only, only that. We also care about uh, um, companies, businesses who have even uh, stronger uh, policies and they need to meet uh, compliance uh, requirements. Uh, so this often happens in, uh, in the companies who deal with health data, with finance data and, and so on. So out of the box when you create cloud composite environment you only you not only get like fully managed airflow uh, environment uh, and that is this is secured with uh, gcp uh, features uh, you also get audited logs uh, you get access transparency uh, if you would like to to um, be sure that all the data that you uh, process and processing happens within a, a given specific location like for example within a given region you can do uh, you can use data residency feature uh, 
uh, you can you can go even further. You can use Azure workloads um, functionality, uh, which means that, for example, even people from cloud support team, they will be uh, from the specific location helping uh, helping you. Uh, I already kind of mentioned that uh, we are running almost the vanilla version of uh, Airflow. As a result, you get uh, portability. There is no vendor locking. You can you can develop your DAGs, run them within Cloud Composer environment, and then take them uh, and run anywhere uh, else. Whether it is your uh, private data center when you do the uh, self-managed Airflow, or another cloud uh, service provider, whether it is like self-managed Airflow, uh, which you run there, or use some managed service. It's actually you are free from both being bothered that you have some any kind of vendor locking, uh, and of course, if you are from from companies like um, health in industry or finance industry, you of course care about uh, um, standards like HIPAA, uh, PCI, and DSS, and other uh, standards. It's not so easy to actually get compliance, especially if you have one of self-managed Airflow instances, uh, and to, to be sure that you are compliant with uh, with those very st complex standards. So, in case of Cloud Composer, you get it uh, out of the box. So, I hope that you kind of value the the stitching that we did uh, uh, for you. Uh, we. Uh, we know that uh, like running insta installing airflow uh, airflow uh, environments in airflow instances is not enough you need to be sure that you can operationalize this uh, this environments you need to be able to monitor them so with cloud composer you get out of the box uh, monitoring uh, so for example if you would like to have uh, email um, notifications when uh, any of your doc uh, is uh, failing, you can easily get it within a, a few clicks in uh, cloud monitoring uh, functionality. Uh, and similar thing with uh, with uh, logging. You get uh, logging uh, out of the box. You don't need to set up your Elastic Search cluster or anything like this. You get the, the logs out of uh, the, the box with uh, divisions for for components as you can see in the screen if you are interested in logs from scheduler or workers or web server uh, you you get it like out of the box uh, within uh, uh, cloud uh, composer so that that's enough about the marketing speech and stitching that we did for you uh, um, uh, let's talk about actually uh, stitching services uh, th this is like a magic power that uh, airflow comes uh, comes with and this boils actually down to, to be able to connect independent services um, that originally were not meant to, to work together. And you can build pipelines based on, based on it as if they were meant to be integrated uh, uh, together from the, from the very uh, beginning. So this is like a Airflow magic power that we can observe when uh, users of Airflow are using Cloud Composer in a Google Cloud uh, platform. Mm, of course, they build different types of uh, pipelines and we have more information on what kind of services are interesting uh, uh, for uh, Cloud Composer users. We also get end-to-end -end observability. And what I really also like about this uh, stitching feature of Airflow is that Airflow in general uh, lives in symbiosis with other workflow uh, technologies. Uh, and we can actually observe it uh, in case of Cloud Composer uh, users. So for example, there are other technologies like Dataflow, uh, Data Fusion, even Google Workflows, which are also workflow uh, technologies. And what is interesting uh, uh, in those cases that ma many times uh, uh, our users are using both Airflow within uh, the form of Cloud Composer with those other workflows, uh, workflow uh, technologies. It's actually up to you to what extent you would like to use uh, a Cloud Composer or Airflow and, uh, and from which point you want to, to go with this other workflow um, uh, technology. So in this, in this regard, Airflow is very, uh, very uh, elastic. And what are the enablers of this, of this teaching? Uh, so of course, we have like very rich marketplace of ready to use operators, hooks uh, and uh, sensors. You get them like out of the box uh, for free. 
I bet that there are also some commercially available uh, operators, uh, hooks and sensors uh, from, from other uh, companies. Uh, but of course, if there is nothing that meets your expectations, you can build your own operators. Uh, you can implement uh, them from, from uh, scratch because everything is kind of implemented in Python. Uh, and if any of those uh, those already mentioned approaches doesn't meet your need, you can go with containers. So you can basically put whatever whatever is needed into a container. It can be even like a Java application that can uh, that should be run to 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 complete your task. And then you can ask Airflow to uh, orchestrate um, execution of those uh, uh, containers. So with those three kind of enablers, you you actually have the power to do anything in uh, in Airflow. Uh, and let's maybe talk about like some statistics related to operators, hooks, and uh, sensors. Um, out of the box, uh, when you install Apache Airflow and then you you uh, you get um, your hands on uh, with the providers and that are also installable PyPy packages, uh, you get uh, more than 470 uh, operators. You get more than 70 uh, sensor, sensors and more than 160 hooks. All of those uh, uh, operator sensor hooks come from more than 50 different uh, uh, providers. And those providers actually embrace like very rich, uh, uh, broad uh, category of uh, uh, of providers. It can be uh, private or public uh, cloud service providers. It can be independent software vendors. You have database technology uh, vendors or data data analytics uh, tools and uh, platforms. So actually, sky sky is the limit. Uh, on the right hand side uh, in this slide, you can see uh, all the. Uh, providers officially mentioned in the airflow uh, documentation um, and being a little bit kind of selfish uh, in, in this picture let's let, let's focus uh, for, for, a, for a couple of seconds on, on google rated uh, operators as you can see uh, for google cloud platform services uh, there is more than 300 operators which constitutes like something like 65 percent of all of all operators available in uh, airflow um, when it comes to sensors and hooks, uh, like more than 25% of all sensors and hooks uh, constitute uh, sensors and hooks for uh, Google uh, services. <clears throat> so we actually invest quite a lot of uh, energy into uh, providing as many operators for uh, Google services uh, as it is possible. So it's very easy to use uh, uh, all the services uh, from Google Cloud uh, uh, Platform. So, so this slide actually summarizes uh, the currently existing operators as you can see uh, you can you can find um, operators hooks and sensors for something like more than 30 um, different uh, services um, and we continue working on uh, developing new ones so in the near future probably we are going to to, to deliver the operators for vertex ai which is a new generation of uh, uh, cloud AI uh, platform from Google, uh, Looker. Um, we, were, we are planning to extend Dataproc um, operators with the capability of configuring Dataproc Metastore. And maybe finally, we will produce operators for uh, Cloud Composer uh, itself. So, yeah. And with this, I would like to pass the voice over to Philip. Thank you very much, Rafael. Uh, so let me spend the next probably two minutes talking about integrations and different approaches you can have from within your Airflow DAGs. This may sound a bit like Airflow 101, but please bear with me because maybe some of this classification might be helpful. So first of all, the big power, and I would argue almost the, the, the killer feature for, for the product is the fact that it has so many different uh, and quality operators to interact with different products. So basically integrating with products in different clouds from different providers is made seamless thanks to the contributions that the community uh, has, has done to build all of those operators. So in order to start working with any other product out there, obviously first try to look whether there is already an existing operator for the system you're trying to connect. Obviously there is a bunch of built-in operators you can use things like bash operator or python operator to execute jobs within the worker itself uh, either as part of the shell script shell session or, or python code you also have provider packages that rafa mentioned for multiple different providers and products for instance 
copying the file over from GCS uh, or actually loading it from GCS to BigQuery or copying it across different products or starting a job in BigQuery is made very, very simple uh, thanks to the use of those operators. And so obviously at the end of the day, creation of a DAG becomes almost like stitching together uh, multiple different operators uh, that execute your business logic, that run your business logic. So for instance, you can have a DAG doing GCS to BigQuery copy, then starting a job in BigQuery, another job in BigQuery, maybe some Python code. And all in all, this is basically a sequence of calls to different operators. Uh, it could be also sensors to start with. Uh, and this is the big power that Airflow comes with um, to, out of the box. So again, to start with, please have a look into whether there is already an existing operator for what you're trying to achieve. But there could be cases where it doesn't exist. So this is where another big power of Airflow in this space comes in, which is its extensibility. Uh, so writing a new operator and extend, extending the set of available integrations is actually pretty simple. Um, you can start with the base operator and basically extend its capabilities to whatever you need your operator to do, like we're showing in here. And once you have this operator properly coded and it um, passes your own tests, uh, you can uh, put it into, for instance, DAX folder when you're using Composer or anywhere else uh, for, for your Airflow installation itself so that it's loaded by uh, Airflow. And then you can make a call to it from any other DAG that you have uh, out there in the same environment. So extending, extending the capabilities of Airflow is made very, very simple. Um, and by the way, you don't have to extend base operator. You can also extend more advanced operators. Let's say if you want to have extra capabilities in MySQL, you can also use the starting point and extend its capabilities to whatever you need. So uh, this is like a second layer of integrations, uh, starting from built-in integrations or built-in operators and uh, provider packages. Custom operators would be the next kind of a safety net in your uh, route towards uh, integrating with other systems. But there is another case where even that is not enough. So imagine a case where you have to, for instance, use a custom binary, some library that is operating at the operating system level. And that is simply not enough to put it as part of the uh, Python operator. You have to extend the operating system itself. So one of the ways to do it, and something I would recommend here, is to essentially dockerizing uh, or putting into a container what you're trying to achieve. So once you build your Docker file and build your container, it actually is pretty straightforward. I mean, you get all the flexibility of running things in your own container. You can put whatever libraries, whatever binaries you want to have in this container. Uh, in, in case specifically of uh, Composer, the next step would be to put it uh, into a container repository, for instance, Google Artifact Registry. Once you have it in there, there's two ways you can think of running this container as part of your DAG. Uh, as part of your uh, DAG run, essentially. Um, you could use either Kubernetes pod operator within uh, Composer and, and this way uh, trigger the execution of that container of that pod uh, in the same cluster where Cloud Composer is running. There are some extra things you may want to learn about in the documentation about it, for instance, just to make sure that you're not going to um, impact other elements running in the same environment, but it's absolutely doable. And this is definitely a use case you can consider doing another option uh, that provides slightly more uh, flexible scalability is to use a GKE start pod operator and essentially start this work over in another GKE cluster that is specifically used to run the job. Obviously some other jobs as well, if you want to, but it's done outside of the composer cluster itself. So both of those options are perfectly valid. The point here is this is the, uh, the other option of running more advanced tasks that wouldn't fit in the regular model of operators either built in or the ones you could uh, model as, as custom operators. Let's now have a look into some example Airflow use cases uh, that we have come to see uh, in our multiple interactions, multiple discussions in different uh, perspectives with customers, with uh, other uh, basically companies working in the space as well. Um, so before I start talking about specific use cases and show you uh, some example, uh, patterns. One of the uh, interesting points you may uh, wonder about is which of the products within the Google Cloud Platform, within our ecosystem, are the most frequently used with Cloud Composer and, and therefore Airflow uh, in our implementation. So first of all, the, the list of top eight is something you can see in the very top. And we're going to talk about different use cases for those uh, items specifically in a moment. But uh, clearly, uh, BigQuery is one of the most frequent products that is being uh, orchestrated uh, along with uh, other products, obviously, as well. But this is uh, practically at the top 
of our list of products that people interact with from Airflow and Composer. Uh, data flow is definitely uh, also very popular. Storage, in different contexts, actually, storage is being used either as a, as a sink or source of the data um, that is basically interacting with other products, for instance, loading the data from cloud storage to BigQuery or the other way around. Also, transfer operators that move the data into cloud storage from outside of Google Cloud or, again, the other direction as well. These cases are absolutely popular and people use a lot of those features. Starting data prop jobs uh, or creating clusters to start a job and uh, move on is another use case that uh, people often come across uh, inside Airflow DAX. Um, oftentimes, uh, data uh, that is generated by the DAG itself might be saved into Cloud SQL um, as well, and some, some queries might be run against Cloud SQL from within Airflow DAX. PubSub is typically used to integrate with other elements that the customer has in their ecosystem, for instance, some custom notifications or um, other systems that may react to a PubSub message being in a queue. AI platform, I should probably open a kind of a, an umbrella here because it's not just AI platform. There's uh, obviously a set of products we have in the AI or ML space overall. There is AutoML, uh, AI infrastructure, uh, Vision API, and many, many others. Uh, so we also see uh, quite a big usage of various approaches to machine learning trainings uh, orchestrated with uh, Cloud Composer or Airflow as well. And maybe one of the last cases to call out, what, what, last but not least, is Data Fusion as well, uh, which is often uh, used in conjunction with other products uh, as part of your uh, integration. So essentially think of it as uh, you're creating a data pipeline as part of Data Fusion, but then you want this pipeline to become part of a bigger thing, which Cloud Composer and Airflow then help to orchestrate. And again, the list is uh, much, much longer. As Rafa mentioned, we have created multiple other operators uh, for most of the products out there. And we did it for a purpose because there was a need for those. Uh, but these would be uh, the most frequently used. Uh, now, in the bottom, you see some more numerical, well, actually, without numbers, but still proportional, um, uh, let's say, ranked list of the top four uh, products that our customers interact with when it comes to number of API calls. BigQuery is clearly standing out storage, obviously, as well, for the reasons I mentioned before, and then data proc and data flow follow. Um, so with that, uh, let me start with uh, explaining one of the use cases from a customer. Uh, and the customer is C3. We're going to see a recording uh, with the customer in just a second. But this is a fantastic use case showing a lot of creativity and um, also a lot of um, understanding of the end-to-end -end value that the platform can provide by stitching different products together. And it basically shows how building blocks of particular products can become a bigger value on its own when implemented the right way. Uh, so let me first explain the use case, and I'm going to pass over to the customer in just a second, uh, or the, the, the video recording of, a, of an interview. Um, so the whole use case is around um, basically analyzing uh, the, how the trees grow and re responding to it in the right way. So the data on the way into the workflow, into the DAG, is already collected um, and uh, it's stored in a cloud storage. And then there are some operations that have to be performed on this data itself as part of data flow pipeline, um, which is essentially triggered as a follow-up task from the storage uh, load. Then uh, the next step in the whole process is a machine learning exercise that is basically uh, applying the right AI model uh, to understand uh, the contents of those images, the contents of the data captured in the real life, um, so that the outcome and the actual recommendations can be uh, can be passed on. So again, I, I personally find it a super um, motivating and, and super encouraging use case to show how how the technology can actually deliver something real and also with a touch to the to the real life. Um, so with that, uh, let me actually. Uh, pause this uh, session for a second and start uh, the video. I'll be right back. C3 is a leader in the agriculture 4.0 revolution. We focus on trees and we aim to optimize the performance of each individual tree. We give tree growers actionable data, allowing them to improve their efficiency and make the right decisions at the right time. Citri operates in four continents. We have teams surveying farms around the world every day, tracking over 50 million trees over time. Our service combines aerial and ground surveys. 
Aerial surveys using drones allow for higher throughput, while ground surveys allow for higher resolution. Applying such techniques at scale raises many challenges. The first obvious challenge relates to the magnitude of data. Being a cloud-native company, our teams upload all missions to the cloud. Afterwards, our cloud services take over and process each mission, preparing insights and reports to be presented to our customers. Our system scales up and down to support average profit of 100 aerial missions and 10 ground missions every day. The second challenge relates to the complexity of the required computation. As you can imagine, the path from a sequence of images to a heat map representing some disease or other measurement per tree is not smooth sailing. Each individual tree needs to be segmented out of the images and classified for different diseases, symptoms, and geometric properties. This chain of computation tasks involve multiple AI models, geometric analysis, and also good old image processing. In order to implement all of this, we decided to build the system around Composer as the backbone that drives the flow of data. In our design, DAGs running on Composer are responsible only for the core business logic that manages which tasks need to be performed for every mission and in what order. The actual workloads run on a separated Kubernetes cluster that scales up and down to accommodate the load. Results are then saved to storage and to BigQuery. A major design decision we made was to allow our non-technical operators to monitor and intervene with the process when needed. As you can imagine, when working with such complex data, things can go wrong from time to time. By integrating the Composer environment with our internal web application, we were able to allow excellent monitoring and control on the process. Thank you. Okay. Let me switch back to the presentation. Again, I, I personally find it very inspiring to see what people can achieve uh, with the technical capabilities uh, that uh, are available and with what Airflow provides. Some other patterns. So we're going to go through a series of different architecture patterns. And I would like to recommend that you don't necessarily see them as the only way to perform specific activities or even the you know, formal Google recommended way, that's not the case. This is just, just to show you some examples of what we've seen around, of how people uh, basically fix or address some of the needs that they have uh, using uh, Airflow, using Cloud Composer and its integrations. Um, so again, maybe it's going to help you build your own pipelines, but don't necessarily think that that's the, that's the only way to do those things. So the first use case I would like to call out, uh, which uh, is basically, uh, running ETL or ELT pipelines that you have created using uh, Cloud Data Fusion. So if you're not familiar with Data Fusion, this is, by the way, this is also open source based product. Uh, so for those of you who find it uh, an important characteristic, you may find it helpful to know that. Uh, but Data Fusion allows you to visually essentially draw your ETL pipeline and, and run it there. Um, and this is oversimplification. But you could have cases where you would like to run this pipeline um, when there is a specific trigger coming from within, let's say, file being dropped to a storage bucket. Uh, so we'd like your data fusion pipeline to be triggered this way. And an example um, implementation of it is as follows. Uh, so for instance, you can start your DAG by having a sensor task, which looks for uh, an existence of an object in the storage bucket. Once this condition is satisfied, essentially the sensor says, yes, the file is actually there, the object is there. It starts the pipeline, and then there is just a second step, the second task in this pipeline being start a data fusion pipeline operator, obviously with some retries if you want to, and other capabilities, observability that we mentioned before, maybe um, notification in case of problems and other elements. But essentially, with just a two-step uh, DAG, you can implement um, the following logic, right? Start my data fusion pipeline as soon as the file arrives in the storage bucket, and integrated the two components together. It's as simple as that. And by the way, um, this, uh, this use case is explained some more in the blog post I'm sharing a link to in the bottom. If you're interested to learn more about it, feel free to have a look. So this is just an example of how you can integrate your ETL pipelines uh, with other activities. Obviously, you could extend it beyond that, and you could add additional steps interacting with any other products out there. Let's have a look into another use case. Let's say you have the data of, uh, of your customer transactions or any other uh, profiles of your customers. Um, 
or your transactions coming from the business world in general. And first of all, you want to load the data from this CRM system, whatever it is, uh, using a special ETL pipeline uh, or special pipeline basically created as part of Dataflow. Uh, so once you code it in Dataflow, and once the data goes through Dataflow, you would like it to be loaded into BigQuery uh, to have kind of a staging layer of it and basically store it there. But that's not the end of the, of the business logic you want to implement, because maybe afterwards you want to run some BigQuery job, let's say to aggregate data or create some analytics on top uh, based on the predefined query you have created. And then you would like to actually store this data forward uh, so that your BI tools like, I don't know, um, Looker or other tools could actually read from and expose this data to our customers. So this is actually a pretty uh, you know, common um, example of how you can process the data on the way in, uh, store it um, within BigQuery, uh, perform some activities, some, some jobs, some queries on it to provide the data you want at the aggregated level, and then basically expose it to whatever BI tools you want. So uh, this is, again, just like a subset or, or a, a piece of a bigger use case, but something you may consider as part of your flow that, uh, again, Airflow, thanks to the in integrations, uh, provides as well. Now. The other big space uh, is machine learning. And we have multiple examples of how you can approach machine learning using different products, uh, also because of the diversity of different products out there. But one of the cases, for instance, we've seen uh, and we, we, talk, we, we talked with uh, some people, um, with some of the customers as well, uh, is uh, imagine you have the data in your big query, in your data set, and you want to have uh, this data to be used as a training set. For your, uh, for your machine learning um, exercise or implementation. And so uh, one of the ways uh, you could think of implementing this is for instance, we're using a GKE cluster, having TPU or GPU uh, nodes running as part of this cluster and essentially uh, passing the data over using cloud storage to the cluster for the actual training and then um, you know, using storage again for the output to pass it, uh, pass it along for the prediction itself, right? So this is just a training model, but the predictions could follow uh, in a separate activity. And by the way, this is an oversimplified picture because in the reality, you could also add some steps, for instance, to scale this cluster up, scale it down, maybe even create it and get rid of it after the task is done. Uh, so you, you could essentially uh, orchestrate the entire execution of the flow uh, with additional details as well. Now, image detection or, or annotation uh, is another use case or image classification, maybe I, could, I can also call it. You can consider uh, implementing. So for instance, uh, you know, just to show you um, how to do image annotation uh, based on already available um, models as part of the Google Cloud, you could think of using Vision API as an example. So imagine that your files that arrive in your storage bucket have to trigger a workflow that uses Vision API to annotate the contents of those images and then basically save it as kind of a metadata in Cloud SQL. So you'll basically say, save the file name along with some tags that come from the Vision API. And it's actually pretty straightforward to do. You just have a sensor for storage, which triggers your DAG, uses Vision API uh, operator that is available, which can um, return uh, the, the annotations that it can actually got. And through XCOM, which is the model to communicate in between tasks, uh, in Airflow, you can actually pass it along to the Cloud SQL uh, operator uh, to run a query. And this query would essentially insert the entry for that specific image uh, to save the result of this annotation from Vision API. So, you know, just three steps can automate the whole flow of annotating the picture and saving it to storage. Um, this was an example with a pre-trained model, but you can also train this model yourself just using a different product. Like if you go for, for instance, um, Auto ML. Uh, from the cloud storage, you could create a data set for the training of your uh, network, use AutoML Vision to actually train this network. Uh, you could actually delete this data set if you don't no longer need it. But and th this would be the training DAG, and you could also have a classification DAG in parallel to this, which uses the output or, or one of the steps of the previous DAG um, in the form of trained model as part of AutoML. It would be used for data classification, for image classification in the following DAG that is actually doing the classification as part of the uh, as part of its own run. So with two DAGs, you could achieve both training and classification, for instance, of different um, images. Uh, first, obviously, with a training set, and then with the actual files that you want to process. So again, just just a simple example showing you how uh, you know what power you gain 
by being able to stitch all of those elements together and, and how much more it becomes uh, when it's more than individual API calls, it actually becomes a real application. Another case is, for instance, running uh, some big data uh, or, or let's say in general, big data jobs or, or some Spark jobs. Um, imagine that you want to run uh, a, a job uh, as part of your data pro cluster, uh, but you don't necessarily want to have this cluster, uh, this environment running all the time because of cost considerations or other, other reasons. Uh, so as part of your DAG, you can actually sense whether the file is there in the storage bucket to start with. You can actually create a cluster on demand, run the jobs that you need. And when the environment is no longer needed, essentially delete it afterwards. So this way you create an ephemeral compute layer to process your, do your jobs, your tasks, um, at the same time orchestrating it all. And, and again, you gain the whole uh, command center for the entire chain. And if any of the steps for whatever reason fails, you have immediate access to the visibility of what specifically happened. Um, so with that, let me just uh, summarize here and, and leave some time for questions if there are any, that um, the power of Airflow, in, in my opinion, one of the biggest powers it has is in this actually stitching different products together because it allows you to elevate the value that it provides from individual uh, products that it is uh, surrounded with uh, to the whole application that is now uh, fully observable, fully manageable, that provides you with the reliability that production systems require, ability to troubleshoot issues, for instance, in case something goes wrong, you know exactly when it went wrong. And also the built-in retries that we haven't really talked about and, and all the other error handling uh, elements of Airflow help you to recover from some of those issues um, in, a, in a production environment in a way that you can actually uh, run it in a a uh, credible way in a reliable way and basically put your mission critical uh, processes on top of Airflow DAX themselves. Um, so with that, uh, I wanted to uh, maybe as a last element here, uh, give you a link, a, a set of links to materials you may find helpful. We're, go we're going to see it afterwards after the session as well with specific um, links. So feel free to have a look in there and obviously uh, I highly encourage you to reach out to us uh, in case of any questions to uh, either Airflow or Composer. Um, and with that, thank you very much.